as he addresses major foreign policy issues. Our Jamie Gangel is working her sources, getting a lot of reaction on a lot of issues. So let's spend some time going through them. First of all, uh, you know, just we're together on all of these issues. You're speaking to your Republican sources. How true does that ring to you? So. I I, I think we should start by saying we have thought for a long time that there were watershed moments, that it couldn't get any worse, that, it, that something was going to change. I'm not sure personally that we are, are there, but what I am hearing over and over again is that, especially with North Korea, there is a great concern about national security. A very senior Republican who's been around Washington, D.C. Uh, a long time said, I have never been so concerned about national security. And not just because of North Korea, because you never know what the flashpoint is going to be. And they're concerned. Does he have the temperament? Is he going to tweet about it? Words do matter. So there is no question there's a growing concern about what's going on. And, and, and among some of the establishment or, or these insiders, there was a sense that, well, maybe it will get better. Maybe over time things will get better. But you're hearing now that people have a belief that it just won't change. Look, there were some people who really, we've seen this from the campaign, they thought, Oh, he'll pivot. Remember that word? When he, when he gets in the White House, he'll change. He'll understand the power of the presidency and the importance. And it's it, to go back to Charlie Brown and Lucy and the football, they're still waiting for it. And he keeps pulling the football. He, he has not pivoted. He has not changed. What about, though, I mean, his words yesterday when he did acknowledge disagreeing with those around him that advise him on foreign policy and those on his national security team. He said, yeah, I have a difference of opinion of them. You can assume he's talking about Iran, North Korea, etc. But then he went on to say, but my, what I think is the only thing that counts. That's how it works. Right. And, and that worries people because, especially people at the Defense Department, people who have been in National mm -hmm. Security State mm -hmm. Department, uh, they don't think that he has the depth of either experience or knowledge or understanding of these issues from where he came from. So when he says something like that, the alarm bells go off. And when Bob Corker, the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee last week, said he was concerned that the president might get us into World War III and said the White House was like an adult daycare center, these insiders that you're talking to say... Amen. I mean, they were really... They, uh, someone said to me, thank God for Bob Corker. What, what Senator Corker said out loud mm -hmm. is what I've been hearing for months behind the scenes from Republicans who didn't want, were hoping to work with him, were hoping they could change him, were hoping he would evolve, or frankly, the Republicans who have to run for office and are afraid that if they take him on, that they'll be primaried and they won't be there. So. There are there are a lot of people who were very happy that Bob Corker mm -hmm. said what he did. But just quickly, we're going to bring Aaron David Miller and again our global affairs analyst. And as we bring da uh, Aaron David Miller and come into the conversation, I just want Jamie to weigh in on this because a lot of those people that are criticizing the president also think uh, think that, that that Kelly, his chief of staff, is the one who's sort of keeping it together. You have some different reporting than others on Kelly. So so there's no question that I think people feel that General Kelly is doing an amazing job as best he can of trying to have discipline and keep it together. I'm sure when he saw the Puerto Rico tweet this morning, he was not mm. happy with that. But there's been reporting that General Kelly is so frustrated that he's going to right. leave. I think it is fair to say General Kelly is very frustrated. Mm. I think it's also fair to say, my sources say, he's not going anywhere. He's okay. a very tough guy. He is in this for the long haul, he sees it as a mission. So Aaron David Miller, let's bring you into this conversation. You've worked for several administrations. Is this discussion in the volume of chatter right now, is it different or is this just a different version of the, you know, we don't really agree with the president and it's the normal diplomats who think they're all smarter than politicians. Uh, you know, I voted for R's and D's. I worked for R's and D's and frankly, in. 25 years of working for the government, State Department, I've never seen anything quite like this. It's unprecedented, it's unbelievable, and arguably it's un unseemly. General Kelly, General Mattis, McMaster, 
They can only do so much. They can improve the efficiency of the process. But look, with respect to impulse control, temperament, these are characteristics, prudence, wisdom, judgment. This is what is required to even begin to cope with the, you know, the root canals and the migraine headaches that the United States confronts abroad. And it, 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 it's essentially a problem. And I'm almost 70, and I'm telling, I think the truth is people don't change. And uh, I, on this one, I think there's enough empirical evidence to, to suggest that uh, there won't be any changes. The, the one positive feature so far when it comes to the projection of the American military force abroad, whether it was that proportionate strike against CW sites in Syria or the Afghan policy, when you actually look at what uh, the Trump administration has done with respect to the projection of military force, expanding the rules of engagement perhaps, uh, causing additional civilian collateral uh, casualties. Uh, that's a problem, but by and large, they've colored within the lines. The problem is when you get into a crisis, uh, and the war of words with Kim Jong-un is not yet that kind of crisis. When something actually occurs, either through miscalculation or miscommunication, a North Korean strike, a conventional target, shoot, shoot down a, 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 an aircraft or a South Korean naval vessel, then you're, then you're going to see the crisis management in action or not. And that, that's the moment, I think, that, that concerns me the most. Impulse control here is critically important. Had Kennedy behaved like the president during October of 1962, it's arguable that a lot of us, frankly, wouldn't be here today. Mm. Jamie, uh, given all that Aaron has said, but also given all of your Republican sources uh, on the Hill, what do you make of the New York Times editorial this morning that says, considering all of this, Congress should at this point consider legislation that would strip the president of the power to launch a preemptive, a first nuclear strike, an authority that was given to him, you know, 19, to the president in 1946. Um, is that something they would think about? Is that just out there? I, I think that I, I can't imagine that this Congress is going to do it. I, I think when the New York Times, and I'm not inside the New York Times' head, but when, when someone puts that out there, whether it's the New York Times or, or others, it's, it's to add to the conversation, right. to say, this is how concerned mm. we are about something. You know, it, it, it goes to state of mind, something right. we don't like, to talk about or speculate about, but it's adding it to the conversation. I don't think Paul Ryan's about to put that on the House no. floor anytime no. soon. Jamie Yegel, Aaron David Miller. Thank you, guys. Uh, you look like a young man. I don't believe your age, no matter what you say. Oh, Thank you so me, much. Uh, trust me on this one. Ask my kids. <laughs> Thanks, Aaron. Appreciate it. Thank you both very Thank much. You. We're going to head to Northern California, where deadly wildfires are still unpredictable. They're getting even worse. Entire towns evacuating thousands of firefighters on the front lines, battling these shifting and strong winds working to save lives ahead. Choose to go, to indulge your curiosity. Explore a new road to see where it takes you. Meet the leaders who change the game. No matter where you are, no matter what the currency, when you run the numbers, they may surprise you. But stay your course, you're on the path success CNN Money